guys, welcome back to Hey Jessica TV. I am super excited about today's tutorial. I'm going to teach you about layers inside of Photoshop. As you guys know, I have started this new series on the blog where I teach you all about Adobe programs and we're starting with Photoshop. It is only appropriate as one of the first lessons in our Photoshop tutorials to talk about layers because it is what the whole program is basically based around. Now before we get into the screencast portion of this video, I want to give you an example of layers that will make sense to you. Okay, so let's envision we have a big old giant sandwich. Like a sandwich, you know, like this big. Big one, it's a big sandwich. And you sit it down on the table and you're standing over top of it looking down. If that's the case, you have to remove the bread before you can see anything else underneath it, right? So with every layer, you have to remove that layer before you can see the thing underneath it. So with the bread, you can only see the bread looking on top of it until you remove the bread and then you can see the lettuce. Then to see the tomato, you have to remove the lettuce and then to see the hamburger under the tomato, then you have to remove the tomato. And now if you if your tomato was this big and your hamburger is this big, then as you're looking down, you'll see the tomato first, but you'll see the hamburger around it. This is very similar to how Photoshop layers work. Now I hope that that made sense to you, but if it didn't, hopefully this will. Let's get started. Okay, so this is a file I have created in Photoshop. And you'll see here, you know, it's just a graphic that I created for um, a webinar that I'm doing. So what you'll see here, over here is the layers palette. Now, if you're new to Photoshop and you don't see this in the same place, that's fine. It's not always in the same place. Um, or if you don't see it at all, what you need to do is go to Window and make sure to check the box or check the selection of layers. Okay, and then you'll be able to see a layers palette. All right, so in every layers palette, there's going to be a background or a first layer and then you know the layers on top of it. Like I said in the intro of this, layers are just like if you're looking down on a sandwich on a table, the top layer is most visible and so on and so forth. So for me, my top layer is this free workshop. And while it doesn't have to be on top of some of these other layers, that's just the way it worked out and it's okay. So here's an example of what I mean. Right underneath it is this black box rectangle that I created so that I can have this effect of having like a label up here. If I dragged free workshop underneath the rectangle, you would no longer be able to see it. So I need it to be on top of it so that I can see what I'm working with. Now all of the text here you will notice is above the photo and that's so that I see the text and then the photo behind the text. Now the order in which the layers that hold the text are doesn't matter at all because they're not on top of each other. So if, if for instance I wanted January 24th in a different color and I wanted it to be um, on top of the January let me just do that really quickly. So let's say I wanted that 24 to be a different color and I wanted it maybe behind the January. You can see here that's when that would be important. So I would drag the 24 under it because that is um, what's then seen. The January is seen first because it is above it in the layers palette. So when you're looking at your layers palette if you're, you you want to look at it from top to bottom, what is on top is seen first and what is on the bottom is seen last. Now, in this example, because this text doesn't really matter, then, you know, you don't really have to move anything around to see what's underneath. Does that make sense? Now, if I moved the image up here above some of this text, it would go away because now the image is in front of it. I'm going to step backwards a bit and get rid of some of these changes I just did. Okay, so 
let's say I wanted a circle, a black circle over here to encompass this text. What I would want to do is make sure that the black circle is above the photo, but not above the text here. So I'm finding my 1 p.m. Tuesday, January 24th. Okay, great. So now I'm going to click on this and just create a new layer, which is what this little button does. And I'll come over here and get my shape tool. We'll talk about tools in another video, but right now I'm just going to create a circle just like that. I'm actually going to move it over just a little. And now you'll see because it's black and the text is black, that's why you can't see the text. But let's say I wanted to turn all of this text white. I'm going to select it all and just go up here and find a white as an easy way to do that. Now you'll see because the the circle is underneath the text, you can see all of the text and then what is not covered by the text, you see the layer directly underneath it. So if I move that above it, you would no longer see that because it's covering it all up. So the layers above one layer will only cover what they take up. I hope that makes sense. It can be very confusing, but layers are basically the fundamental foundation of Photoshop. So you'll have everything in a new layer. So this is something I highly suggest anytime you're working in Photoshop is to have everything in a new layer. A really good example of this is if you're creating, let's just go create a new layout. And let's say I want the background of this to be um, like a mint green color. And I want to just do a brush writing over top of it. So maybe in black, I want to write, hello. Oh, wow. That is that is skillful right there. But because I didn't create a new layer, I have drawn that on this background layer which is not good. So if I wanted to move my text around, I have to move this whole layer. So what I should have done was to keep the background the way it was, created a new layer on top of the background and drawn, I'm gonna make my brush bigger, and drawn what I wanted to there. Okay, so now I can independently move that layer around. It doesn't have to be moved with the bottom layer. So each layer is independent of itself and doesn't have to be manipulated with any layers around it, but you do wanna make sure that each element of your design has its own layer. Okay, so I don't wanna overwhelm you, so that is going to be all for today, but check back in for the next Photoshop tutorial very soon. Mm -hmm.